We have another analyst that is really high on Ole Miss, maybe even predicting them one or two. Seriously, that's none of my business. You are locked on Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and a 10-year veteran member of the national media with Yahoo Sports. Today on the show, we talk about Adam Gorney from Rivals.com saying that if he put out a top 25, Ole Miss might be number one or number two in the 2024 top 25. And the only reason that that isn't the consensus is that people would be scared to write that. Also, the message coming out of camp practice Thursday is that Nareel White is impressing. We reintroduce you to this true freshman and why players are talking about him. And Ole Miss travels to Tennessee to face the Vols for what should be and what should be the goal over the next couple of weeks. We'll let you know about that as well. The Grove Collect is doing their March to Victory campaign this month. What does that mean? It is the new NIL campaign for Ole Miss Athletics, and their hope is to raise $10 million and gain 10,000 total members by the end of March. It's a March Madness talk type competition that pits regions against each other to see who can get the most. The Elite Eight is happening right now. Let's keep Ole Miss Athletics in the forefront and go to the grovecollective.com slash march to victory. Again, that's the grovecollective.com slash march to victory to help make that happen. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're free and available on all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thank you very much for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day, and a special hello to the everydayers that make the show what it is. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of drivers that likes to push things just a little bit further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. All right, so we had a story that came out. Actually, a video came out on YouTube. We'll put the link up that you can go check that out. Um, Adam Gorney from Rivals.com talking about Ole Miss's scenario with Lane Kiffin this year and how far the Rebels could go. And he was he was really high on this Ole Miss football team, as you would expect, although he got the year wrong. He mentioned they started playing in 1902. I think that's the school down south. Um, it's, it's like 1893, I believe, was the first year of football at Ole Miss, but that's kind of uh, – it's, it's not an important point to get hung up on. Adam Gorney believes that this football team, because of the experience that they have accrued and the transfer portal talent that they have brought in, the way they've mashed together, Jackson Dart's going to be a third-year starter. Jared Ivey is going to be a third-year starter. Trey Harris is going to be a second-year starter. Jordan Watkins is going to be a third-year starter. J.J. Pegues is going to be a third-year starter. The transfer portal has gotten to the point where you almost have had a full, full recruiting cycle of players that didn't actually sign with your school out of high school. And because of that continuity and with having a quarterback that is a Heisman candidate quarterback, we did a video yesterday about what Jackson Dart can see from where he is and what exactly type of player he could be in the history of Ole Miss football. I mean, realistically, you have a real chance that if Ole Miss goes to the playoff and is good enough to host a playoff game, Jackson Dart has more wins than any other quarterback in Ole Miss history. All the people on the outside knowing what's going on understand that. They also understand that even with the loss of Quinshawn Judkins to Ohio State, running backs is not that important of a position anymore. Now, it still can be important, but it's not really important. And if Ole Miss does indeed get Henry Parrish out of the transfer portal this spring, and you have um, Kedrick Riesgeno, and you have Ulysses Bentley the fourth, which this is a major, major skirt spring for Kedrick Riesgeno. Kedrick Riesgeno it is going to be absolutely massive for this young man as a running back because this is this is the spring 
where you get to build up confidence in what's going on. Whenever they watch films, you need the you need those busts to be at an absolute minimum and do whatever you can for the next 13 practices to be in the best possible situation. Because if Ole Miss brings in Henry Parrish, that's somebody that kind of knows what's going on. It's somebody that's going to be able to hit the ground running. And whenever you have Ulysses Bentley, like I said, he's a plus Jerry and Ely. We we know what that uh, this offense looks like. We know what this running game looks like. Adam Gorney can see that. Other press members can see that. And Ole Miss is building up hype, building up hype. And it's going to become a point where one of the main questions that Ole Miss is going to have to deal with is dealing with the hype. And everybody's going to say, well, Steve, quit talking about it. Quit doing that. It's like, no, I'm not the problem in this case. I'm not the problem. This is going to be a situation to where they're going to have to shield what's going on. And you can see with spring practice, they've closed down access. Thursday, no viewing periods happen. There's several reasons for that. Now, some are going to think that it's it's because of the transfer portal opening up in a couple of weeks. Okay, whatever. But the more likely thing is you don't want the media to get in because they don't drill down on it. We saw this with the complete change of defense back in 2021 when Ole Miss completely changed their defense and nobody knew anything about it until they ran on the field against Louisville. We know that all they have to do is close practice and nobody is going to dig or ask the right questions or anything like that to figure out schematically anything that's going on. So as long as you don't see it, you can't really report on it. So that's one of the reasons it gets closed down. I think this offense is going to look a little bit differently, okay? In the same way that looked a little bit differently when Jeff Levy left and Charlie Weiss came in. Because of John David Baker and his air raid type passing concepts that were brought in, those got melded into the offense. Now, it's going to be George McDonald and his stuff. And his stuff is more slot-centric than the stuff that was being done by John David Baker. And yes, we have Trey Harris. We have a lot of good receivers that you can choose from. But the offense is going to tweak just a little bit. So Adam Gordon probably doesn't know that. Nobody's really going to know that because they're going to close this down for essentially it seems like the whole spring, which I'm completely fine with, as you can imagine. And You have a chance to take that next step as a brand, not necessarily as a football team, because we've discussed in the past that football programs don't exist anymore. It's the 2024 team, the 2025 team, the 2026 team. That's the way it is. That's the way it has to be attacked. If you are counting on growth from one to the other, you can get blown up by the transfer portal so that nobody is nobody smart is doing that. And because of that, you're building up a brand, not a football program, a brand, and the perception of your brand. Whenever you can string together a few seasons in a row, if Ole Miss goes to a playoff game in 2024, that means in 2021, they went to the Sugar Bowl. In 2023, they went to the Peach Bowl. And in 2024, they went to some other New Year's Six type bowl game. That's a heck of a run. That is a brand defining run to where you have to change your thinking of what's happening in front of you. Reporters like Adam Gorney, reporters like, I don't know, Pat Forty, reporters like Barrett Salee, those guys and their opinions of Ole Miss, whenever you're doing the random thoughts, and Notre Dame has been the beneficiary of this forever, Texas is too, for some extent, is like, hey, we're filling out a top 25. You obviously can't go from year to year. It's kind of a guess based off the transfer portal. So basically you're ranking off brand. It's a brand ranking recognition. And everybody's going to say that's not important. And, you know, as far as the football season goes, it's not important. But this is where it is important. Stuff like that and the perception that goes in are recruiting tools. Whenever you look at 
schools that are getting in line to get prospects that are schools that are get the bu- that get buzz. And if you're getting buzz in these preseason polls, these meaningless polls, to where their perception of you goes up, you're going to recruit a little bit better. You're going to get benefit to the doubt that you weren't getting before. Life's going to become a little bit more easy for you. So that is why stories like this Adam Gorney and all this hype coming up is a big thing. We're we're talking about what Jackson Dart could do. We did that yesterday. What this 2024 could lead to. And I, I talked about Beatles mania a little bit. That hype is directly leading into these outside press members when you look at the talent that Ole Miss has brought in, is bringing back, and has recruited. It's going to help them basically increase and hype your program up. Now, sometimes... That hype doesn't work. That hype can be a problem. Remember when, I guess it was week four last year when we were seeing the tweets online was, was the Colorado Buffaloes better than 2019 LSU? That that That's the other side of hype. But that's going to happen. Not everybody is going to bat a 1,000. But they are going to do that. And despite what happens, honestly, on the football field, the ancillary stuff, it's worth it because of all the recruiting wins and all the names and houses, all the people that's taking your call that two years ago absolutely would not. But you're looking at a Sugar Bowl, a Peach Bowl, and potentially a college football playoff run, and that would be absolutely massive for Ole Miss football. Pretty fired up about exactly how that can look for Ole Miss in the near future. Thanks again for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day. This wide receiver is standing out in the early stage stages of spring practice. We'll talk about that in just a second. After using Manscaped, I can finally say I caught spring favor. Introducing the season's champ, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Their fifth-generation trimmer features two interchangeable next-gen skin-safe blade heads. The standard one for taking a little off the top and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It features a dual LED spotlight to help guide you through the darkest winter debris. Navigate with confidence in your delicate areas, and if you hate making a mess, not to worry. This bad boy is waterproof. Shave in the shower, the bath, heck, go out in the ocean for all I care. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, all one word, at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, and views from your seat, their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. It's got easy to find and buy tickets of every type of event in your area, and they do have views from every single seat in the venue. They have the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, all of this stuff that can hook you up. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find those last minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And with zone deals, by the way, you can pick the section and let Game Time pick the tickets, and you can get even more savings. And Game Time's guarantee means you will always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section or row for less, Game Time will give you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On, all one word, for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, so Nareel White is really showing out. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, right now, I do want to let you know this. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day. And shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has created its own 
24-7 streaming channel called Locked On Sports Today. It's on YouTube and the Amazon Fire TV channels app. Go there, download it, do all of that good stuff, and enjoy those pod- podcasts and everything else. It's really cool. If you're, you're tired of all the shouting and yelling on ESPN and Fox, just go over there to the Locked On Sports Today and get some good old-fashioned sports right there. And I am going to be on there as well at some point. I'm not exactly sure when, but as the college football season gets upon us, you will get to hear from me a little bit more as well. So talking about Nareel White, the wide receiver out of St. Martin, I believe, on the coast of Mississippi, just to reacquaint you on this player. Now, this is a super athletic type player. Now, he played all over the field in high school. It's hard to get a read on him his senior year because unlike his junior year where he played predominantly on the outside, he played on the inside, he played on the outside, he played quarterback a little bit as well, and his athletic ability is second to none. He is a guy that has all the ability to be the prototypical slot type wide receiver at Ole Miss moving forward. Now, with Caden Lee, with Aiden Williams, with Nareel White, you can see where a nice little core is being put together, whether Austin Simmons or Walker Howard is calling signals next season. Jordan Watkins, after practice yesterday, when asked directly, which newcomer are you most impressed with? He said, Nareel White. And he said it was near real White that it's because he's adjusting kind of quickly. He's acclimating. And because of that, now he's at the point where he's able to show out. Now, Nareel White has Elijah Moore level gifts in some areas. And because of that, he's a guy that whenever you're in shorts and shirts and just shoulder shoulder pads and shorts, you have a chance where he's going to stand out before the physicalness takes over. Nareel White is probably not a guy that's going to see a ton of wide receiver playing time this fall. Don't expect him to do something crazy like that. At the absolute best, it could be somebody like J.J. Henry, but it's important to remember the wide receiver group has Trey Harris, it has Jordan Watkins, it has um, Juice Wells, it has Deion Smith, it has Caden Lee, guys that are established in the room, and it's going to be hard to move up that depth chart. But his work in the early parts of spring practice is nothing but encouraging, especially when you consider this, this wide receiver group is going to go a long way in determining the quarterback competition between Walker Howard and Austin Simmons. This wide receiver group, that's Caden Lee, the Nareel Whites, the Aiden Williams, the, that core is going to be the wide receiver group that Ole Miss has to depend on with those quarterbacks. They're talented. They're very good. I've, I've talked about all of them. But it's important that Nareel acclimates quickly because of what he means to those guys. Again, do not expect Nareel White to come on and play on the field on Saturdays this fall. Now, he's probably going to get in the game because if everything goes to script, you're going to have a situation to where you're whipping up on a few people. Now, Ole Miss doesn't play Vanderbilt, and I, I guess everybody can take that for what it is. But... It's a situation to where Ole Miss should be in pretty good shape. When you look at their non-conference schedule, they play Furman. That's a game where Nareel White should play. They play Georgia Southern. That's a game where Nareel White should play. They play Wake Forest. That's probably also a game that Nareel White should play. And I think they um, play another non-conference game as well. Middle Tennessee, that's another game that Nareel White should play. Although Derek Mason is the coach of Middle Tennessee now, I don't know, but the early transition that can be um, that can get pretty hairy. And you look at games that he might get a chance to play during the SEC season, Kentucky at home. Um, I would say Arkansas on the road, but we all know how Fayetteville goes. Mississippi State at home. That's another game where he should he should show out a little bit. So those are the games where you're looking at in the real white making an impact as a true freshman. Jordan Watkins was impressed with him. And whenever a player talks about another player that he's impressed with, that gets my attention. Because those guys are paying attention. 
those guys know what to be impressed with, especially somebody like Jordan Watkins. If both of those guys are playing in the slot, if both of them are doing that, then Jordan Watkins knows exactly if Nareel White is doing more than he's expected to do well. So just pay attention to that, honestly, as well. Good stuff. Again, Thursdays, no viewing happenings for practice. Last night, we had David Eckert for our practice report. And I think we're going to name it practice report in quotes um, just because there's no eyes on it. So you're basically just hearing from three players. But J.J. Pegues, Jordan Watkins, and Trey Washington were the three guys that came out Thursday afternoon. Go to the Ole Miss official YouTube account. All of those interviews are up and available. So you can check that out as well. Pretty fired up about that. It was, a, it was an interesting day. Still more to come on the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ole Miss travels to Knoxville to face the resident SEC psychopath in Tony Vitello. And we talk about the next few weeks and what it might mean for Ole Miss next. This week's March Madness Bracket is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're predicting one of the teams that stands out, a team that has pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. So the Oregon Ducks were obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance in the Pac-12 tournament final, punching their ticket to the big dance. They say, win life, go rogue. And that's exactly what the Ducks have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen of the day and shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Be part of history. Now, Ole Miss is set for a road trip in the SEC. This is their first SEC road trip. And other than the trip out to Hawaii, which I've said over and over again, it was kind of a strategic error. This game at Tennessee should be interesting, to say the least. Um, Tracy Hughes was on the SEC After Dark channel on YouTube um, talking to Derek Vandegrift about Ole Miss baseball and mentioned that he is going to be about an hour away from home and gave like 22 minutes worth of an interview about that. So go check that out if you have a second. But he, he described it up there as an electric atmosphere. He said whenever things are going well, that place gets completely off the chain. And it's a whole lot of fun. It's, it's a little launching pad of a stadium, okay? And you got Tennessee going in there trying to play home run derby. You've got, you know, the ball flying out and you don't even hear about Tennessee people talking about their pitching because they just go out there and play bully baseball. You know, the old school LSU thing that they did, what they call it, gorilla ball or something like that, where they just walk up there and hit home runs. It looked like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Um, that's what Tennessee kind of is doing right now. And they're also leading the SEC in doubles, but you don't hear much about their pitching. So I'm really curious to see them throw the football. And if Gunnar Dennis, if Liam Dahl, if um, Grayson Sonia, those guys can go long enough in the bullpen to preserve those guys because those, bull, those bullpen arms are absolutely nails right now. I got to give Derek Vandegrift all the credit in the world, um, him talking about what the bullpen could be because starting off the season, he's been absolutely right about that. So we'll see how Ole Miss does up there against Tennessee. Now, if you follow the rules of engagement, and the rules of engagement in the SEC is going to be this. You win at least one game on the road, and you win at least two games at home. If you do that, you're going to be in the hosting conversation at the end of the season. This league is so powerful. 
So if Ole Miss can get one game in Knoxville, it's a successful trip. I know that there are going to people be people that want to win every game. Yes, I get that. Tennessee's a top five level team. They just lost two out of three against Alabama. So you are going to get their best shot. You are going to get the best that they have coming up there. And they're going to be in all their obnoxious glory. They're going to be ready to go trying to sweep you. So if you need to get one game, after that, it's bonus. And if you can win the series and get two, you're going to be in really good shape. Because here's the situation. They have Tennessee, and then they have Kentucky at home, and then they go to Fayetteville. In my opinion, Ole Miss baseball needs to be 5-4 and four in the SEC going to Fayetteville. And the same rules of do not get swept, that applies up in Fayetteville as well. But if they are six and three, that's house money going up to Fayetteville at that point. You have a chance to start stacking wins and doing things and doing the opposite of what happened a year ago to Ole Miss baseball. Last year, Ole Miss baseball won one series. And the losses piled up early and often. They ended up, I think they got swept against Vanderbilt and they just started stacking up. And before long, you just looked at the standings and it was too daunting of a climb. The opposite can be true this year. If you can get an extra win at Tennessee, you can get an extra win against Kentucky, then all of a sudden you got free house money going against the Arkansas Razorbacks. It's an interesting situation. We'll see. I, I like Ole Miss's chances with Liam Dole just pretty much consistently. That guy just absolutely shoves, and he's fun to watch on a Saturday. Gunnar Dennis, he is that player. You see so much velocity now from pitchers. And then he goes up there and throws 88, 89 mile an hour. And you're like, oh, they're going to kill this guy. Oh, they're going to kill this guy. They just don't. So Friday night will be anxiety inducing, essentially. And then Grayson Sonia, if he comes up there and he's the Grayson Sonia that we know of and, and we're ready and we've seen the last few weeks of the season, we're going to be in shape. If it's the Grace and Sonia that pitched against South Carolina Sunday, could be iffy. I, I, I'm looking forward to this weekend and the test of where Ole Miss baseball is because I think I've done videos pretty much consistently for the last three weeks. Like, how good is this Ole Miss baseball team? And it was one of those situations where we were trying to talk. How good are they? they on paper, they look good. And Andrew Fisher's just knocking the cover off the ball like the natural. But how good is this baseball team? They took two out of three against a ranked South Carolina at home. You know, that's kind of what they're supposed to do. Whenever Ole Miss is a good baseball team, that is kind of what happens. Now, can Ole Miss get two on the road at top 10 Tennessee? If Ole Miss gets two on the road against Tennessee, the narrative in this baseball team changes. All for the good. So we'll see exactly how they move forward going into the rest of 2024 because that Kentucky series is going to be huge. You can't slip up then. And then you got the absolute free shot at number one, Arkansas, who's playing extremely well. And they just pitched the heck out of it at the moment. So I'm pretty fired up about where they could end up. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen. Every day is we have DeMarcus Lodge this weekend to talk about spring football. But for your second listen, check out Locked On Sports Today. Locked On Sports Today has been launched as the fir first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. For those of you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Howdy toddy, everyone. 